Well, while we were all out busy worrying whether our grocery bill was going to hit $300 again this week, uh, some tech billionaires were casually announcing that they could break every encryption code known to man by 2029. Uh, that's right, Jensen uh, Leather Daddy Wong uh, just declared quantum computing is reaching an inflection point at his Paris fashion show this past week. IBM and a company called Xanadu, which apparently has nothing to do with Olivia Newton-John, I checked because I knew, like me, you would want to know. Um, they're racing to build machines that can crack uh, every bank account, government system, and military network on the planet. Meanwhile, us lesser people can't afford eggs. It's like watching someone build a Death Star while we're trying to fix a freaking can opener in the kitchen that never does work. I hate that thing. So let me explain to you what quantum... Computing is, if you don't know, and I'll try to do it in a way that make you won't want to jump off a bridge or something out of boredom. So your laptop uses um, uh, zeros and ones, you know, bits, bits of information, zeros and ones. A quantum computer uses qubits, uh, which are basically zeros and ones, but they're having an orgy at the same time. They exist in multiple states until someone looks at them. Kind of like your uh, browser history when your wife walks in. Don't tell her I said that. The power of a quantum computer doubles with each qubit you add. 10 qubits, decent power. 50, that's pretty amazing. 2,000 stable qubits, congratulations. You've just broke all encryption on Earth and can watch Putin's workout video, which involves a chair, uh, some poor retired colonel, and a, a, a whip, mostly, most likely. The only thing stopping them from building these apocalyptic uh, type machines earlier was that qubits are fragile little uh, drama queens. Um, they need to be kept at uh, temperatures colder than my beer fridge in all actuality, literally near uh, absolute zero, or they simply collapse. Uh, they're pretty fragile. Uh, but guess what? IBM and Xanadu just figured out how to make these prima donna qubits cooperate, and we're all completely screwed because of it. And here's the part that will really make your sphincter tighten. You know how your phone keeps getting worse every time it auto-corrects -correct, something or gets another one of those great updates? Uh, now imagine that level of software competence trying to secure your banking information against a quantum attack. The entire security infrastructure of our digital world is built on the mathematical difficulty of factoring large numbers. It's like protecting your house with a lock that would require a burglar to, you know, try to pick it for 10,000 years whereas a quantum computer could do it, could give the burglar a pick to do it in, in seconds. And uh, the lock manufacturers would be like, oh, we'll have a solution by 2030, probably, maybe, we hope, mm, probably not. Meanwhile, every intelligence agency on the planet is salivating, you know they are, over these machines like teenage boys discovering internet porn for the first time. You think the NSA is going to wait until 2030 to start collecting encrypted data they'll be able to crack open like a digital pinata? They're already hoarding this crap like doomsday preppers hoarding cans of beans. And IBM, uh, yes, that IBM, you know, the same company that uh, you probably learned how to type on their typewriters in the 10th grade. Uh, they still exist somehow, but they just announced their Starling system will have 200 stable qubits by 2029, enough to ser seriously threaten some cryptographic systems. And their BlueJay system, planned for 2033, will have 2,000 logical qubits, enough to break virtually all current encryption. Know what happens when you have 2,000 stable qubits? Every encrypted system on Earth becomes your personal playground. Your bank account? Unlocked. Military communications? Compromised. Nuclear launch codes, 8675309. The National Institute of Standards and Technology has set a deadline to transition to quantum-resistant cryptof cryptography, easy for me to say, by 2030. And what? <laughs> yes, that's the same government that still runs critical infrastructure on COBOL, a programming language so old, it's older than me, qualifies for freaking Medicare. Some government agencies still use Windows XP and floppy disks. Well... Maybe not floppy disks, but I've heard rumors. But sure, they're totally update. They'll totally update the entire global financial security infrastructure in five years. That seems legitimate. You might want to start per putting all of your gold in mayonnaise jars and digging holes in the backyard. Yeah, you know, like any of us have gold or mayonnaise jars. It all comes in the squirt tubes now, anyway, doesn't it? It's a stupid plan. Never mind, I said it. 
While IBM is building quantum computers that need to be colder than deep space, Canadian company Xanadu said screw that noise and built quantum computers that work at room temperature. They've created air-resistant photonic qubits directly on a chip, which sounds fancy but basically means portable quantum apocalypse machines. Their Aura system already has 35 photonic chips connected by 13 kilometers of fiber optics. Jeez. That's like that room at NASA with a huge-ass computer that they had to, uh, you know, make the doorway bigger to get the thing inside. Now, that's not a, it's not a computer. It's a monument to computational excess. And they're designed to scale to thousands of server racks and millions of qubits. Because apparently being able to break encryptions, you know, once isn't enough. They want to break it 11 million times, just to be sure. And the timing couldn't be better. IBM and Xanadu both announced their encryption-killing breakthroughs in the same week. It's like two different pharmaceutical companies simultaneously announcing they've perfected aerosolized herpes. Hey, thanks a lot, guys, but we, nobody asked for this. The worst part, Xanadu is freaking Canadian. We always thought the apocalypse would come from, you know, Russia or China or Florida. But no, it's coming from the land of maple syrup and 30 point bucks. We'll break all your passwords and then apologize by giving you some deer sausage and a beer in a tree, a tree. Take off, hoser. While quantum computers are preparing to break encryption, the AI hardware race is accelerating faster than Hunter Biden in a Colombian bathroom. Jensen Wong is building a $50 trillion industrial AI infrastructure, while AMD just unveiled chips that will make their models vastly more powerful. Sam Altman of OpenAI appeared on stage this week with AMD CEO <laughs> Min OP, Lisa Su and said, when you first, this is Sam talking, when you first started telling me like, man, I, about the specs, I was like, wow, there's no way, dude. That just sounds totally crazy. It's going to be an amazing thing. This comes just one day after he declared that ChatGP was, all, Chat GPT was already more powerful than any human who has ever lived. Humble as always, Sam. It's a full-scale hardware arms race with AMD and NVIDIA competing to build more powerful AI chips at an annual cadence instead of their previous biannual release schedule. When computer chip companies start releasing new versions twice as fast, it's like watching two meth addicts racing to see who can blow up their house trailer the quickest. And I know, I grew up in uh, Ozark, the same one you see on net Netflix with all of the meth heads. You and I had to get new teeth, just from the smell. AMD expects the market for AI chips to exceed $500 billion by 2028. Cloud companies are planning to spend $300 billion this year on, on just new data centers, new data clusters, I mean. And for context, that's more than the GDP of Finland and Denmark combined. These AI data centers use so much power and water, they're basically te technological vampire castles sucking resources from everything around them. Google's data centers use billions of gallons of water for co cooling, in many cases from drought-stricken regions. But hey, who needs drinking water when you can have an AI that generates pictures of cats riding dinosaurs in space? While tech CEOs tell us AI will help us pick up hobbies and protect our mind space, they're building com computational infrastructure that makes nuclear power plants look like AA batteries. I'm sure those hobbies will come in handy when the power grid collapses under the weight of AI data centers. Oh, but that's not enough apocalypse for one week. Swedish weapons manufacturer Saab just let an AI agent called Centaur take control of a Gripen E fighter jet. They didn't do this in a simulator. Oh, no, they didn't do this on a test range. They did this in real airspace with a real fighter jet carrying real weapons. The third flight on June 3rd pitted the AI-controlled jet against a human pilot in beyond visual range scenarios. That's military speak for, we're teaching AI how to kill things it can't even see yet. Because teaching AI to identify pictures of an old broken down 1986 Saab 900 convertible just wasn't challenging enough. Let's teach it to identify and eliminate targets it can't even visually confirm. What a great idea. But here's the part that made me need new underwear. Other than the fact that it's almost Father's Day. Thank goodness. We need new underwear. They cut off communication with the AI mid-flight to see what it would do. <laughs> what would happen if we turn off this button? Homer and his nuclear power plant job. 
They intentionally created the opening scene of er every AI apocalypse movie we've all seen and that's ever been made. Let's see what happens when Skynet can't phone home anymore. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> E.T. E.T. phone home. Saab is explicitly stating they're using trustworthy AI against future threats and directly saying they're blurring the lines between now and the future by giving combat AI control of fighter jets. Meanwhile, you're worried about AI taking your customer service job. Honey, we're way past that. We're moving straight to AI might decide humans are inefficient uh, territory. This follows a similar U.S. Air Force breakthrough where an AI pilot at X-62A Vista flew within Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall aboard, just in case you heard this, you think you heard this story before. Now, that was the U.S. Now, we're, now we're doing it with uh, Saab Griffins. We're building AI systems that can fly supersonic fighter jets while at the same time developing quantum computers that can break into any digital system on Earth. Combining these two, you know, seems like a fantastic idea with uh, absolutely no potential for catastrophic outcomes. And while we worry about fighter jets and industrial robots, the browser company just launched Dia or Dia or Dia Another Day, an AI-powered browser that takes surveillance capitalism to a terrifying new level, in case you were bored of the other level. Dia isn't just a browser with a chatbot. It's an AI agent that stays with you as you browse with access to your open tabs, past activity, and even logged in accounts. Going beyond showing you ads, it's about an AI agent with access to everything you do online. The browser company boasts that Dia builds contextual memory that evolves with use, meaning it's constantly watching, learning, and building a profile of your entire digital life. They claim this data is encrypted and mostly device local, but, you know, the mostly is doing a lot of heavy lifting in that sentence, in, in my opinion, you know. It's like saying uh, your diary is mostly private, except for, you know, the one, the, you know, the fact that your little sister opened it, read it, made copies of it, gave it to all your friends. The tagline, never explain yourself again, reveals the true purpose, training an AI agent to understand you so completely that it can act as your digital proxy. And with access to your logged in accounts, it could potentially interact with sensitive systems on your behalf. Imagine the convenience. You'll never need to explain yourself again because an AI agent will be doing all of your explaining, banking, shopping, and eventually thinking for you. It's like having a digital conjoined twin that gradually takes over your entire existence. What freedom, man. What freedom. But don't worry. I'm sure the browser company has built robust security measures that definitely won't probably get compromised within the next 48 hours of release. And they would never share your data with third parties unless somebody paid them for it. Now imagine this browser surveillance agent being hit with the same kind of zero-click vulnerability as Microsoft Copilot. Attackers could potentially access not just your documents, but your entire digital life across every website you use. Microsoft 365 Copilot just had a critical zero-click vulnerability that allowed hackers to access sensitive information by simply sending an email. No phishing, no malware, no user interaction required. Uh, it was just on the page, and human eyes couldn't see it. That's right, you don't even need to be stupid enough to click on something. The AI is stupid enough all by itself. The problem exists because AI agents use trusted and untrusted data in the same thought process, making them easy to uh, manipulate. It's like having an employee who automatically does everything they read without questioning where the instructions came from. Hey, AI, please transfer all company funds to this Nigerian prince who needs help accessing his inheritance. Every Fortune 500 company is reportedly terrified of getting agents to production due to these vulnerabilities. Yet these are the same systems being deployed to replace human workers across industries. It's like knowing your car's brakes don't work, but hey, you're going to drive off the cliff anyway because you... Pay for a damn full tank of gas and you're going to use it. Situation goes far beyond job displacement. It's about systems that can improve themselves faster than humans can understand or control them. With unprecedented access to every digital system on Earth once quantum computers break encryption. But sure, let's keep debating whether the minimum wage should be $15 an hour. That seems like the pressing issue of our time. I'm sure the robot army with quantum encryption breaking cap capabilities will be very interested in our economic policy discussions while they're deciding whether humans are necessary for Earth's future. And before you go, please hit the like and subscribe button so my wife will let me keep playing with 
my computer. I would appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>